So I think this is going to be a relatively quick review to do, but that's not because I didn't enjoy the game or anything like that. It's just that the game itself is quite basic and pretty straightforward. Now I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just feel like sitting back and playing something for a short amount of time. Some people might enjoy Sudoku or word searches or perhaps even hidden item games. For me, it kind of varies depending on my mood or even the time of day. I found both games in this double pack to be a great little side distraction and, like the majority of games that I review, these are not high-end AAA games. Instead, they're two puzzle games that you can play basically infinitely in between other things that you're doing, perhaps when you don't have time to dive into a massive RPG, for example. That's what the developers set out to create, and that's what they've done, and I think they've done it well. So before we get into what this double pack actually contains, let me give you some information regarding the physical release. Firstly, a full disclaimer, I was sent a physical copy of the game for free for review ahead of its official release on April 15th, 2022. I have the Nintendo Switch version, but it'll also be available on PS4, and of course you can play it on PS5 via backwards compatibility. I won't show you the actual physical edition this time, purely because it's basically just like any other Switch release. However, each Nintendo Switch copy does come with a branded stylus for use with the Switch's touchscreen, which I appreciate. It's also worth pointing out that both games that you get in this double pack are already available via digital download. The physical version, however, puts two games together on one physical cartridge, so it's great for collectors. As far as I'm concerned, the more games that get a physical release, the better. So what games are part of the Double Strike physical release? Well, both games are part of the Bishoujo Battle series. You get Mahjong Solitaire and Cyber Panic on the same physical cartridge and with absolutely no downloads required. The first game, Mahjong Solitaire, is the oldest of the two and takes the classic game of Mahjong and introduces a slight twist. As the player, you'll need to match two of the same tile to remove them from the board. However, you can't select a tile that sits between two others or under another tile. This creates a sort of strategy scenario where you need to think a few steps ahead because removing the wrong tiles may leave you with no legal moves left to make and force a restart. There's also a combo system where you can earn more points for making faster moves and an overall timer that you can extend by simply removing tiles. Each stage consists of three rounds and by clearing each stage you can unlock new costumes for the various girls in the game. The costumes do get a little bit more spicy as you unlock them, but the game's rated as Peggy 12 here in the UK so there's no actual nudity whatsoever. The second game on the cartridge, Cyber Panic, is a little bit different. As you can see, you have the silhouette of one of the game's girls on the screen, and you control a small chibi-style head. The idea is that when you move your cursor onto the silhouette, you'll automatically draw a line on the image, and once you've drawn a box of any size, the game will then cut out that section of the image, revealing the character underneath. Your goal is to uncover 75% of the image to pass the stage, but that's easier said than done. As you reveal the image, your play space gets smaller and you'll need to dodge the enemies that roam around each level. You have four lives at the start of each stage and you can lose those lives if an enemy collides with you or the line that you're drawing. There's also some power-ups that appear randomly in each level, such as a speed up or a time stop, and you can actually kill the enemies by boxing them in and cutting them out. Once again, there's definitely a lot of suggestive artwork in the game, but nothing too naughty. So what do I think of these games? Well, honestly, I like them. I think they're fun little distractions for in between other games. Funnily enough, I don't really use my Switch in handheld mode. I mean, I sometimes play games that are either turn-based or, you know, require less input on a handheld, but generally, I would say that I use it in docked mode on my TV most of the time, yet I found myself trying this one out in bed before going to sleep. Normally, I randomly look through social media or something like that before I actually go to sleep, but I have to say, this was a far more enjoyable use of my time. So what can I point to as things that I like? Well, I mean, these are very basic games, so there's not really going to be a huge amount to say. While I am familiar with real-life Mahjong, having played it quite a bit myself, I did quite enjoy that game, but I think if pressed, I would actually say I had more fun with Cyber Panic overall. Both games are pretty good in their own way, of course, but Cyber Panic just feels a little bit more action-orientated and interesting to me. Both games are perfect examples of easy to pick up and difficult to master, and for me at least, it has that just one more game kind of feeling to it. Once again, I find myself in a situation where I'm playing a game that I didn't really know that much about, far more than I ever thought I would, and that's great. I actually found it quite relaxing to just, you know, make a cup of tea or coffee, something like that, and sit on the sofa with the games in handheld mode, and then put some reruns on the TV for some background noise. 
Playing these games like that worked really well for me, and I would guess that's how most people tend to play puzzle games. I mean, I could be wrong about that, so if you play your puzzle games differently, let me know how you do it in the comments down below. In terms of content, I think there's a good amount to get through here, and some of it is honestly quite challenging. Both games do have an easy mode, but I decided to just stick with the normal setting for my sessions. The Mahjong game itself is pretty much infinitely replayable. I mean, it's got 100 plus layouts and then randomized patterns of tiles on top of those layouts, so there's a lot to do there. Cyber Panic probably has less stages overall, but due to the way the game works, you could potentially keep playing it for higher and higher scores. Plus, you have all the costumes to unlock in both titles, so there definitely is a bit to keep you busy. One thing I will point out is that the artwork of the girls is very nice indeed in both games. Every piece is of a very high quality, at least to my eyes, and every character is very attractive in their own way. And you guys know me by now, I do like me some anime girls, so both games get a huge thumbs up from me. Lastly, I just want to say that I'm pretty sure there'll be some people out there who would say, well, why would you play something like this when games like Elden Ring or Persona 5 exist, or, you know, insert other popular game here? Maybe you're wondering why I would give such a positive review to a small and relatively unknown game like this. Well, I think to answer that, I would say a lot of people rate games or score games versus each other, and that simply doesn't work because they're not created equal. I've always believed that games need to be looked at on their own and judged on their own merits, although sequels are a bit different as you kind of critique their relationship to each other. But anyway, the developers of the games knew what they were making, they knew where it would sit on the food chain, they priced it accordingly, and they're okay with it. You just can't compare Cyber Panic to God of War or Mahjong Solitaire to Gears of War. Most of you who watch my videos regularly will already know this, but I'll say it again, not everything is for everyone and that's okay. Certain games are made for specific niche markets and these two games do exactly what they're supposed to do and they do it well. In my opinion, Bishoujo Battle Double Strike is an addictive double pack of puzzle games with great artwork, solid presentation and a lot of lewd charm. Releasing formerly digital-only games in any physical version is always a positive move, and if you ask me, it should happen far more often than it currently does. Ultimately, like a lot of other niche games, this isn't going to be for everyone. If this isn't your thing, then that's cool, it doesn't have to be. But if you love puzzle games along the lines of Standard Solitaire, Hidden Item Games, Sudoku, Word Searches and the like, this may actually be worth a look. If you're ever tempted to download a mobile game to just pass the time, please remember that games like this exist. They're created for that very purpose, and as I just mentioned, you could easily do a lot worse. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you'll consider subscribing, and if you like what I do and want to help support the channel, please check out the first link in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.